Today on Be Hook Knitting, I'm going to walk you through the Game Day Knit Hat, a free pattern from Red Heart Yarns. This pattern is versatile and perfect for beginners because we never actually work in the round. We'll go ahead and download your free pattern from redheart.com and let's dive into the tutorial. The first thing we need to do to cast on for our game day hat is create a long tail. So we're going to use the long tail cast on and you can of course guesstimate just pull a whole bunch of yarn out of your skein but there is a little bit more of an educated approach to this. What I like to do if I'm going to be casting on a large number of stitches, in this case we are going to be casting on quite a few, well I just like to hold a little tail and then wrap the yarn in a nice even number. So we're going to go with 10 for now. It's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So one of these wraps is about the amount of yarn that you'll need for one stitch to cast on. You can give yourself a little bit extra, that's always a good idea. I'm just going to slide it down a little bit and release that. So I can estimate that this amount of yarn is about how much I will need to cast on ten stitches. There are two sizes available for this pattern, a small and a large. The small I found fits really nicely on my head, so I would say it's appropriate for a woman or a teenager, would be perfectly fine. The large size is gonna be better for males or someone who has just a slightly larger head. And our cast on number is 100 for that small size and 112 for the large size. So I've worked with that 10 number because I'm going to cast on for the small size and I'm just going to just take this yarn and run it back and forth. So this is 10 and 20. I'm holding on to the end there. I'm just going to flip it around. That's enough for 30. Now once we have our long tail, then we can go ahead and grab our needles. I do recommend using a circular needle for this project. You can work the flat section back and forth with, with just straight needles if that's what you have available. But once you start doing the crown shaping, you will need to either have double pointed needles or a circular needle because as we change the shape, it does need to have some flexibility. And so I find that having a circular needle, it's a catch all really because you can knit anything on a circular needle, but you can't necessarily knit everything on a straight needle. So you're just gonna grab one of your needles and loop that around. So I have my working yarn here is at the front. I'm gonna shove my tail there to the back. So we have working yarn in front, tail in the back. And then you're going to just insert your two fingers, gather up the two strands down at the bottom, and then we're just gonna pull it down. Now I'm holding on to the loop that's resting over my needle because if I don't, it's gonna slide right off. And I just want to work my needle over and catch the loop on my thumb, then work it back and catch the loop on my index finger. Then you'll release the thumb loop over the tip, pull it tight, and there we have two stitches cast on our needles. Let's see that again. We'll work it around, catch that front strand on our thumb, work it behind, catch the strand on our finger, and then allow the loop to come over. Once again, for the small size, we're going to cast on 100 stitches, and for the large size, you'll cast on 112 stitches. Once you've cast on all of your stitches for this project, 100 for the small size or 112 for the large size, just take a couple of minutes to double check and make sure you have your count correct. The last thing you wanna do is go through the entire first row and realize that your pattern is off. So it's best to take a couple minutes to make sure it's right before we move on. Now I have this situated so my tail is coming from this direction. This is the working yarn over here. 
And our pattern repeat is really quite simple for this pattern. We're going to be working in a two by two rib is how you hear it said sometimes. And it's basically just a knit two, purl two. It's really simple. So we're gonna knit our first stitch and I'm gonna take my free needle here and find my first stitch, insert it knitwise. So that means from front to back. And then I can grab my working yarn, wrap that around the needle, and then knit it off. So we'll repeat that one more time because we need to knit two. And then we're going to purl two. So for purls, we need to pull the working yarn in front and we're gonna insert our needle from back to front. So I'm just gonna circle it around, insert it in this direction. Then we'll wrap the yarn around that needle and purl it off. And we have to purl two and our working yarn is already coming from the front, so I can just leave that there, insert my needle purlwise, wrap it, and purl it off. Now that's our repeat. The next thing we'll do is knit two. So we'll pull the working yarn in the back again, and we'll knit the next two stitches. I'm always making sure that I'm holding on to my loops. It's easier if you have them at the front of your needle to, to work them off. It's easier if they're right there. But the danger you have is dropping them off the tip when you don't want them. So I always have my fingers on the, the stitches here on this needle. So I know I'm not working them off. So I'm sort of doing the same thing for this needle too. I'm just making sure that I'm holding on to those stitches so they don't go anywhere. All right, let's see that purl again. So we just knitted two, so that means we're gonna purl two. Now, pearls always feel a little unnatural when you're first starting out. You'll find a rhythm and they will get easier as you go, especially because we're gonna be using them a lot for this pattern. Okay, so that is the stitch repeat. I've been demonstrating how to do the American style of knitting. So that is where I'm holding on to the working yarn with my dominant hand. I do like to go back and forth between American knitting and continental knitting. And if you were a crocheter before you started knitting, you probably feel more comfortable holding the working yarn in your non-dominant hand because that's what we do for crochet. So for those of you, I wanna demonstrate how to do the knit and the purl in the continental style. Just know that we're not changing anything with the pattern. We're always doing knit two, purl two. So I've just switched everything around. I have my tail over now on this side and my ball of yarn is coming from this way here. And I'm gonna gather up my yarn like I normally would when I'm crocheting. So I'm holding that in my non-dominant hand. We just did two purl stitches, so that means we need to do two knit stitches. To do a continental knit stitch, I do like to work with the stitches really close to the tips of the needles. Again, just securing them with your fingers to make sure they don't slide off. And we're still going to insert this needle knitwise, and we're going to just go from front to back like we normally would. Now we can't really wrap the yarn with this hand because of the position, but technically we don't have to. You can see the way it's set up here that the tip of my needle is resting on that working yarn. So all I have to do is pull that through the loop. The other thing you'll notice is I'm holding on to this stitch with this finger right here. I'm sort of stretching and opening that stitch up so that when I grab the working yarn, I can just simply pull it through. Now it probably looks a little bit more complicated on screen. It actually flows really quite nicely when you give this a try. So again, holding on to the back of the stitch, taking my needle to spread it open, grabbing that working yarn and pulling it through. So that's the continental knit stitch. Now we need to work two purl stitches 
And pearls in the continental style, it baffled me a little bit at first. I wasn't really sure how to make it happen, but I watched some other seasoned continental knitters and found this strategy and it actually works really well. So you need to have the working yarn in front to do the purl. That doesn't change depending on if you're working on the American or the continental style. But how do you get your working yarn there? Well, what I found is my middle finger back here is free. So I'm just gonna take my middle finger and allow the working yarn to come in front. And I have these two fingers available to pull the working yarn out of the way. Then my needle is free to go ahead and insert purlwise. So from back to front, that part doesn't change. Then I can release my hold on that yarn, lay it over the needle, and then use those two fingers again to create the wrap. Then you'll just knit it off. So we have to purl two, so we'll do that again. The yarn's already in the right position. I'm just going to insert my needle purlwise, wrap it, and purl it off. Now we'll knit two. You saw how I just allowed my working yarn to fall at the back again. We need to do that for knits, and we'll just knit two. and purl two. And that's our stitch repeat. So you've seen it now in the American style of knitting and in the continental style of knitting. You can use whatever method you find the most comfortable. Well, the next skill you're going to need to know is how to read your knitting so that way you know what stitch you're supposed to work and if you've been working the pattern correctly. When we're looking at our stitches like this, what we need to do is learn how to read our knitting or know exactly what stitch is what. While there is a strategy and a technique to figuring out what is a knit stitch and what is a purl stitch when we're looking at it here. And if you're looking at this, you're probably feeling like they look pretty much the same, but there really is a difference. So keep this in mind, purls have bars and knits have V's. Let me show you exactly what I mean with that. Let's look at these two stitches right here. Do you see this bar that goes over the front of it? And it's really close to the needle. That bar is really close. Pearls have bars. So that's how I know that these two stitches are pearls. Well, let's have a look at the next two stitches. One could definitely argue that there are bars right here and I think you would be pretty much correct in your assessment, but the difference is that the stitch is sort of scrunched up, especially because we have our first row here. What you'll need to do is pull that stitch down. When you do, do you see that V there? So we have a leg here and a leg there, so it's going in that direction. That's how we know that this is a knit stitch. So this knit two, purl two combination is our stitch repeat for every single row of this pattern. We will do a little bit of color changing and we'll talk about that in the next section. But before we get to that, what I need for you to do is finish knitting your first section of this hat. So we're going to just repeat this row every single time, knit two, purl two, and once your work measures either five inches from your cast on edge for the small size or six inches from the cast on edge of the large size, once you get to that point, then we're ready to start talking about the color changes. So you're going to measure from down here all the way up. It needs to measure either five or six inches. Something to keep in mind while you're working through this repeat is that we're always going to be knitting the knits and purling the purls. So as we get to the end of this row, our last stitch is going to be a purl, and then our first stitch of the next row is going to be the knits. So knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two for every single stitch, for every single row until our cast on, edge measures five inches for the small size, six inches for the large size. 
go ahead and finish that and then we're going to talk about the color sections next. So what I've done off camera here is I have knit my hat so that it measures about five inches from our cast on edge and now we're ready to start working with the stripes. So the first technique that we're going to learn is the color transition from one color to the next. We're going to use this same technique for all of the stripes. So we'll just demonstrate it with this first color change and then we're going to recap exactly how the stripes are going to come together. Changing to a new ball of yarn or a new color of yarn while knitting is actually really simple, especially if you can pick up on the edge here like we are now. So I still have my color A attached. I'm just gonna leave that there for a moment. And you'll take color B, leave yourself a nice long tail because we're gonna weave this in later, and then just loop it over. So I'm just holding on to this. And now insert your needle in your first stitch. Now we're following the same stitch pattern, so I'm inserting it knitwise because my first two stitches are knits. And then I'm just gonna place that loop on that back needle and you may have to sort of gather it up in your hands and pull it through just as if you were knitting it like normal. Now your first stitch is gonna to wanna to stretch out a little bit like that and that's fine. Just go ahead and hold on to your color here and tighten that up. What I would recommend doing at this point is just hold on to that so that it's not going anywhere, you're not losing your stitch, it's not getting too loose. And before we sort of get ourselves situated here, go ahead and knit the next stitch. Now it's important that you are not knitting with the tail. That would not be good. So you'll just knit it with the working yarn. And then once you have a couple of stitches on your new needle from the new color, then you can go ahead and fasten off color A. Again, you'll leave yourself a couple of inches so that you can weave that in and you can just safely leave that there. I mentioned before that we're not changing anything with the stitch pattern. So I knit two, I purl two, then go back to knit two and purl two. So stitch pattern is the same. The one thing we do need to keep in mind is how often we're changing yarns to make the different stripes in the hat. So let's have a quick glimpse at the pattern and I will highlight exactly how many rows and with what colors you're going to work them. Let's have a closer look at this section of the pattern. We've already worked through row one until it measures five inches and that's where we left off. We made our first color change to B. Well, it says here that we need to work that in pattern for four rows. So that just means we're working our knit two, purl two for four rows with color B. Then we're gonna move on to color C. We're gonna work that in pattern for eight rows. And we're gonna transition back to color B, work that for four rows. And then finally we'll change to color A and we're gonna work in pattern until the piece measures about nine inches or 11 inches depending on the size you're working on. And at that point, we're ready to begin the crown shaping. So go ahead and work through these four color changes, finish all of your stripes, and when we meet back up, we'll talk about that shaping. Once you've worked up your hat to the proper length, it'll look something like this. So nine inches from our cast on edge if you're working on the small size, 11 inches from that cast on edge if you're working on the large size. Well, from here, we're ready to start on the crown decreasing. So we're gonna do the shaping. So we're starting now with row number one of the crown shaping. And the first instruction is to knit two together. So the name is pretty intuitive, so you can probably get the idea that we're knitting two stitches together. Well, all you need to do is find your first two stitches and insert your needle knitwise into both of those stitches. Then you'll just wrap your yarn and knit it as you normally would. Now the instructions say to purl two, so I'll pull my working yarn forward Purl the next two stitches. Okay. 
and then we just repeat that sequence. So we'll start off again with knit two together. So I just find those next two stitches, insert my needle knit wise, wrap the yarn and work it off. Now purl two. You'll also notice that we're sort of following our pattern here. I'm, I'm still purling the purls and I'm knitting the two knits together. Find the next two, knit two together, and we're just gonna repeat this across the row. Now we are decreasing with this, of course, so every time we knit two together, we are turning two stitches into one. So at the end of row number one of the crown shaping, we're going to end up with 75 stitches if you're working on the small size or 84 stitches if you're working on the large size. You can just count those on your needle to make sure that you're on the right track and then we'll move on to row number two. Now for row number two of the crown shaping, we're going to knit two, purl one and work that across our row. So we have to change our pattern just slightly because on the previous row, we worked a knit two together. Well, as you have probably realized that the back side of a knit is a purl. So we're just purling that one stitch here on this new side and we're knitting the two purls on the flip side of it. That might be a little bit more information than you're interested in knowing, but it's just a little observation that you might find yourself doing as you progress your knitting skills. In row two, we didn't increase or decrease, so we should have the same stitch count, 75 for the small and 84 for the large. So we're moving on now to row number three. And for this row, we're going to start with a knit. So we'll knit the first stitch. So the next thing we're going to do is purl two together. And the concept is the same as the knit two together, but of course we are purling rather than knitting. So we're decreasing two stitches into one, and the first thing we need to do is bring our working yarn forward. Now we'll find those next two stitches and insert your needle purlwise into both of those stitches. Wrap the working yarn and work your purl like normal. Then that starts our repeat. We're going to knit the next stitch and then purl two together. Knit the next stitch and purl two together. So at the end of row number three, if you're working on the small size, you're gonna have a total of 50 stitches on your needles. And if you're working on the large size, you're going to have 56 stitches on your needles. Now moving on to rows four through six, all three of these rows are worked exactly the same. And again, it doesn't matter which size you're working on, small or large, we're all working on the same pattern at this point. So for rows four through six, our stitch pattern is really simple. We're gonna knit the first stitch, purl the next stitch, and repeat. So knit one, purl one, and we're gonna do that across. You'll work that for all three rows. And when you get these three rows, then come back and we'll talk about how the pattern is going to vary a little bit from size to size.
once you've finished up a row number six, then you can sort of see this gradual shift on either side, kind of going towards the middle. That's exactly what we want in order to just shape up the crown and eliminate some of the bulk that's gonna happen when we sew this thing together. Well, up until this point, we've worked row one through six of the crown shaping, and that instruction has been the same for both the small size and the large size, but this is the point where they're going to change. So I am working on the small sized hat, so I'm gonna demonstrate rows seven through 10 for the small size. Now, just below that, if you're following along with the written instructions, you'll see row seven through 10 for the large size. It does vary a little bit, but the techniques are nothing new. They're all the same that we've covered. We're gonna knit two and purl two together for some more shaping, and then we're just gonna knit and purl like we always have been. So let's look at row number seven for the small size. We're gonna start off row number seven with a purl two together. And it's always a little bit fiddly getting a purl two together on your very first stitch. You wanna make sure the working yarn is forward. So what I do is just put my needle underneath it. So I have the working yarn coming from this way here and it's not interfering with the cord that I have for the needles that I'm working with. So you'll still insert your needle purl wise catch those first two loops, and then you'll grab your working yarn, wrap it around, and then purl as you normally would. So you wanna shift your stitches up close to the front, keep some tension on there so you don't drop the wrap and purl it off. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is start our repeat. We have a knit two, purl two repeat. And you'll see it's worded in the pattern. It's really easy to get confused actually because the instructions say to purl two together. And then we see in parentheses, knit two together, purl two together, repeat across. We're only purling those first two together. The repeat is actually the knit two together, purl two together. So if you were to take it out of context, one would think that you would purl two together, knit two together, purl two together, purl two together, and that would be your start. So that is not what we're doing here. We're treating that first stitch completely independent, and we're going to knit two together for the first part of our repeat. Then we'll pull the yarn forward and purl two together. pull the yarn back and knit two together. And that's our repeat for row number seven for the small size. At the end of row number seven, we drastically changed the number of stitches now that are on our needle. We'll have 25 on them if we're working on the small size like I am here. Now we're almost finished decreasing. We're gonna work a couple more rows where we don't increase and then our last row will pick up and decrease a little bit more. So moving on now to row number eight, I'm going to knit the first stitch. And again, this isn't part of our repeat. We don't wanna count that. It's a stitch all on its own. We're gonna knit the first stitch and then we're going to purl one, knit one, and that's our repeat. So pull the yarn forward, purl, the next stitch, pull the yarn back, and then knit the next stitch. And just repeat that all the way across. Now for row number nine, we have a similar repeat. We need to purl the first stitch. So once again, we need to have that working yarn forward. So I'm just gonna place my needle behind it, insert, purl wise to purl the first stitch. Now from here, our repeat is knit one, purl one. And we're just gonna do that across the row. Row number 10 is a repeat of row eight. So what we need to do is knit the first stitch And then our repeat is going to be purl one, 
knit one and we're going to do that across the row. We've made it now to our final row, row number 11, and we're picking up with both sizes here. So both the small and the large are gonna follow the stitch pattern. We're going to knit the first stitch, and then we'll start the repeat. Knit two together, and then knit one. Knit two together, and knit one. And just repeat that across the row. We're actually not going to do a traditional bind off here. We're gonna do something a little bit different and a lot more easy. Once we've finished up that row, we're going to leave ourselves a tail that's about 16 inches long. You can make it a little bit longer too, it never hurts. Go ahead and trim that and thread the end on your darning needle. Now what we want to do is take our darning needle and slide each of the stitches off the knitting needle and onto the darning needle and just pull that tail through. So we're fastening off this way. We're also creating a drawstring closure. So I'm inserting my darning needle in knitwise and pulling that through and then just working that all the way down. Well, the next thing we need to do is sew up the seam on the back part of our hat. And I'll just be honest here, I have tried three or four different methods to try to minimize the seam that you see at the back once we make this seam. And honestly, this is the best way that I've found when I'm gonna demonstrate here. A lot of times when you're knitting two pieces together, you have sort of a selvage stitch. So that way you can do a mattress stitch, work back and forth, and just sort of pull the two edges together and it sort of looks seamless. Well, that doesn't exactly work with this pattern because it flows evenly. So we have the two knits and then the purl here. Well, that's the pattern right there. So when we try to seam it together that way, it, it works out pretty well. So if that's a technique that you are already comfortable with, definitely go ahead and do that. But I will say that you can see a seam. So honestly, I tried all of these a little more advanced techniques and I sort of just went back to the basics and I found that just a plain seam with a whip stitch actually looked the best. So that's what I'm gonna demonstrate here. You'll go ahead and thread your tail on your darning needle and just make sure that's pulled nice and tight. Now the other thing to take note is that I have my hat so that the wrong side is facing out and I just want to situate it so that I have the seam like this. I'm gonna pull that nice and tight once again and just place the two ends together. You wanna to try to take a small, like the smallest seam as possible. So you don't wanna insert your needle way down here because then of course that is going to be your raw edge and then you're, you're gonna be losing some of your circumference of the hat if you do that. So I found that if I go really close to the edge of each side, then it does give me the best result. So once you make that first stitch again, you'll just wanna give it a little tug just to close up the top part. Now we will have a pom-pom there, so it's where it's gonna be hidden, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But I'm just going back in the same spot to kind of reinforce that closure a little bit more. And from here, all we're going to do is whip stitch. So in the case of the whip stitch, we always go in from the same direction. So I'm always going in and out in the same direction, and that's going to loop the, the yarn, the tail here, over the top. And I'm gonna make sure that I make one stitch per row, or in other words, just get them as close as you possibly can, because the hat will stretch when you put it on your head. 
and that's okay, but if your stitches are too far apart, then you will see little gaps. So you wanna to try to avoid that if you can. The other thing I would recommend is after you've worked a few stitches, then go ahead and flip it right side out and just look at your work. Now I don't really have that many stitches here so you can't really see, but that's a pretty good seam right there. I'm happy with that. You can see it, but it's not really ugly. <laughs> it's not unsightly. Once you finish up your seam, then you'll have several ends to weave in. I'll demonstrate that next. And this is the tail actually that I used for my seam. So I'm just going to work it up to a row where I have two knits. So just working it over to that next spot. And then I'm gonna catch one of the legs of the stitch there on the bottom. And you may have to rotate your work a little bit so you can get it situated. What we want to do is wrap this tail around this row of knit stitches. And these bent tip needles work really well for this. And you're just gonna take it, take your needle, and just swing it around. Now sometimes it works a little better than others. Sometimes it goes slow and you have to do just a few stitches at a time and that's okay. Just do whatever works, pull it through, and then just keep going. Now you want to do this for all of your ends. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about is making the pom-pom and attaching it. So the last thing we need to do is make our pom-pom and I'm going to be using a clover pom-pom maker. This is the 85 millimeter size and we need to gather all three of our colors and use that to wrap and make our pom-pom. The last thing we need to do is attach our pom-pom. So you'll grab your darning needle again. Just thread it on one of the tails that you use to secure your pom-pom. And then we're going to run it directly under the closure. So from one side to the next, 
pull that through, leave a little bit of slack so you can still see the opening. And then we're just gonna grab the second tail, thread that, and then we're gonna thread it in the opposite direction, but sort of in the same space. Then we can just pull on both of those tails. You'll see it secure up to the top of the hat. And then we just need to tie a couple knots.